Recently updated November 11, 2020, New York Times Wirecutter writes an article on how to turn a Raspberry Pi into a game console. This updated version changes from the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus to the Raspberry Pi 4. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to uh, we're going to read through this and, and walk you through it. And I'm going to share it with my own analysis of what was written. There were some things missing in my opinion. Um, and there's some things that I've built many of these and some things I disagree with and I might actually go a different route. With all that being said, let's go ahead and go through this article. Let's see what we like, what could be better. But wow, the New York Times giving the Raspberry Pi some love. Good times. So when you jump into the article, the first thing you see is this Nest Pi case here with the um, iBuffalo SNES style controller. This is a USB controller, but then they have Nintendo games. You have no need for any of these carts if you are going to be emulating the software, but it makes the picture look cool. Um, the Nest Pi case is probably one of the most um, close to the original console cases out there, especially for the Raspberry Pi 4, which doesn't have as many cases as the 3. So to their point, the first paragraph is yes, the Raspberry Pi 4 will emulate basically any system from the 70s, the 80s, and even the 90s, um, up to Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, PSP, and all the way down to Commodore 64, Amiga, etc. Now the first link they say is you need to go buy a Raspberry Pi 4, and I like what they did here is they didn't go tell you to go buy the 4 gigabyte or the 8 gigabyte model, and they explained it down here as well that the 2 gigabyte model is plenty. I understand people are thinking like, oh, I want to maybe upgrade and, and save some room for something I want to do later. It's not necessarily going to help you later. And if I were you, I might put that money towards a larger SD card or towards a better case or towards a better controller. But if you have um, money is unlimited, then go ahead, get the four gigabyte uh, model, get a little bit more RAM. Now, when you click on the link, though, <clears throat> they do do affiliate links here on this website. But when you do click on the link, you'll notice that it comes with the power supply and a switch and some heat sinks and the Pi. And uh, I kind of disagree with this. One is you won't need those heat sinks, especially because they're telling you later to buy this case, which comes with a heat sink. And then two, they're not giving you the adapter. And you can see here that Amazon knows that these are often bought together. And yes, most people don't have mini HDMI um, adapters so you need to buy this adapter as well i feel like that's something that they missed in the video that not everyone has sitting around you might need that especially if this is your first time setting up a raspberry pi next we get into the storage the raspberry pi board here does not come with any kind of hard drive so what it uses is a micro sd card now you can absolutely use a um, usb hard drive but that's a whole nother video we're not going to get into that here now most people will be fine with 64 gigabytes or less i would not necessarily agree, but um, let's just say it is 64 gigabytes. I definitely don't think you have to go with one of these Nintendo Switch um, SD cards. If you just do a search for 64 gig micro SD card, um, the Samsung is great. The SanDisk is great. Um, this Micro Center is probably the best bang for your dollar in my mind um, as far as speed to performance. And then uh, the PNY Elite down here is pretty cheap as well for $9.99. Do not get these little where I don't even know heard of these brands before do not get them do note that you know you can get 128 gigabyte for under $20 as well so don't buy into the Nintendo switch hype just get a decent a1 you know decently fast SD card name brand I do agree with this <clears throat> CD based consoles need more so if you're only doing Nintendo Super Nintendo PC engine you really don't need much more than 64. But to their point here, that any game like Sega CD, um, you know, Dreamcast, uh, PlayStation, you know, those are going to be half a gigabyte to a full gigabyte per game sometimes. So you're going to run out of gigabytes pretty quick. Controllers. This is where I disagree with them. Um, you know, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, when they published this original article, these controllers used to be only $23. Let's see what they're up to today. They're still at 42 which is crazy. That's a lot of money. I would definitely get this used one for 22 in a heartbeat. But um, I went ahead and searched out because a lot of people have made third-party controllers now, like iNext, as well as RetroFlag themselves. If you scroll down here to RetroFlag, this one as well for $15. The thing you don't get, these are still plenty good as far as the D-pad and the, the, the bumpers and everything else, and the buttons, 
really, really good. The one thing though that the that this um, the one that your advertising does have is does have a turbo button. So if you want to hold down a key for a long period of time, it does have the turbo functionality. And the resale value on this one is a little better. But uh, I definitely think you should save some money, especially if you're gaming on the cheap, and buy one of those third-party ones I was showing you earlier, either the Retro Flag or the iNex. Retro Flag is slightly better in my opinion. Now, um, I like what they pointed out here is that some of you might not even need to buy a controller. You might have a DualShock 4 controller, a PlayStation 3 controller, or even a Nintendo Switch controller, which will work just fine. But if you are gonna shell out $43 for a controller, do not buy this one. I really think you should get the 8-bit dough. Either get the SF30 if you don't like the little handles on this one, or this one comes with you know the PlayStation style handles. And uh, you know for $50, these go on sale for around $40 to $45 fairly regularly or you can buy it used for $42. So that's the rundown on the controllers. Next we come to cases. Now again, um, another reason why I don't like that they posted this Raspberry Pi, this Raspberry Pi, remember it comes with a power supply, right, it comes with that power supply, you're paying for it, but then they're telling you to go and buy a uh, case, do I have it open? Yeah, here it is. They're telling you to buy a case, one of these, there's a bunch of sellers that sell a similar case, and the case will come with the, uh, the power supply. Let me just click on the exact link so you guys see what I'm saying. It comes with the power supply here. So um, might as well just get a Pi 4 kit. So back to the Pi 4 over here, Pi 4, 2 gigabyte. You really only need the board and an HDMI cable. So. You can look at this Raspberry Pi 4, 2 gigabyte, $42 compared to uh, 55. So you save a whole $13 right there because you're gonna get the power supply with the case. So um, I don't th I think it's a little details that they missed when they were kind of going around this. Um, the SSD overkill is a bit overkill. It's pretty cool though. It looks really cool. This, this um, cartridge is a, uh, it's a hard drive holder. Okay, so at this point, if you bought all the things I showed you in these Amazon links, uh, you should now have everything you need to get started. Now, they go over recall box. You can read through this yourself, but they, they talk about a couple things. One is that um, they talk about the legality of all this. You know, you're downloading ROMs, which are digital copies of a game that um, you may or may not have paid for. And uh, to their point, N Nintendo themselves have made it clear that, you know, that is pirating. They don't want you to do that. Um, however, what they go into here, if you do want to do it legally, you can go to ROM Hacking as a website. And they actually set, they actually have homebrew games. And so these are like fan-made games. And oftentimes these are free. So if you did want to do it legally, you could go download games from this website here. However, do know that ROMs are very easy to find with a simple Google search. You can find a lot of these ROMs. But again, do it at your own, you know, you know, if you do, do know that technically it is illegal if you don't own the game. So using a Pi as a game emulation machine, okay. So they do talk about the other operating systems. You got RetroPi, Recallback, Recallbox, Batocera, and Laka. And my two favorite are Recallbox and RetroPi. Now I can understand though why in this tutorial they went with Recallbox because I agree it is probably the most user-friendly and easy to get booted and running out of all the four. That being said, it does have some short fallings, but if you're watching this video and you're new to all this, I would definitely start with Rock Recall Box and not hesitate. Now, um, how to get it all set up? Well, you go to the Recall Box website and you download the Recall Box uh, image. Should be here somewhere. There you go, Recall Box reloaded. Get the version for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, you're going to go ahead and install a, a, another program called Etcher. They have a link here for you. This is Etcher here, and it's going to look something like this. You're going to go put your micro SD card in your computer, go ahead and format it, open up Etcher. It's going to look like this, and then go ahead and add your recall box image to your SD card, which is the one in the middle, and then go ahead and hit flash. Once you've done that, you can remove your SD card from the from the um, computer you're using and go ahead and insert it into your uh, Raspberry Pi. When you turn on your Raspberry Pi, you should now be in Recall Box. They then in this, uh, you know, they talk about configuring your, your controller. That is the first thing you need to do, which is configure your controller. And um, 
they're showing you a Bluetooth controller, which again is kind of misleading here because if you have a USB controller that they're advertising here, you won't even need to set up the Bluetooth. Um, but if you do get the 8-bit DOE controller, you do have to pair your Bluetooth device. So whether you have a Bluetooth device or a wired controller, you do have to tell it what buttons correspond to what, uh, like A and B, X and Y, and select and start. You do have to set all of that up when you first boot. They're also mentioning you also want to go ahead and connect to your wireless network. And you do have to do that because that's how you're going to be transferring your ROMs to your Raspberry Pi. And then the other one is pick your shaders. And yes, a lot of the emulators, the programs that run these games, will allow you to change the shaders and change the pixelation and the scan lines. And so you could do all that. Uh, that's kind of an advanced thing. A lot of people just leave it stock and they're totally fine with it. Now, once you've connected to the Wi-Fi and your controller's working, you could just go ahead and go on your computer and network into your Pi through the web browser. Pretty cool that you don't actually have to go into the Windows base, uh, you know, uh, network area, and you know you don't have to SSH and all this other stuff. It's actually fairly simple, and so um, download your ROMs, whether it's a homebrew ROM or you go on Google and you download like Super Mario, whatever it is. Go to your web browser, you know, type in Recall Box, hit Enter. Um, if you're on a Mac, you need to add that. Open up the Recall Box Manager page, click on the ROMs button on the sidebar. It'll look something like this, it'll be ROMs. Click the Nintendo Entertainment System folder, and then you'll need to put that ROM in that corresponding folder. So you'll notice here you'll have some sort of breadcrumbs. Here you have Index, ROMs, NES. You might have Index, ROMs, Super Nintendo, Index, ROMs, Dream, Sega Dreamcast. So you just wanna put the right ROM in the right folder. Um, some ROMs will be fine if they're still zipped, um, but that's an advanced topic we'll get into in a different video. So once you're done, once you add the ROM to the right folder, all you gotta do is hit upload and that ROM will be transferred from your computer onto your Raspberry Pi. At that point, you can actually launch the game. You're ready to go and you can start playing Nintendo or whatever game you are playing. Um, they do go into some advanced settings, which is how to quit a game, save your state, load a state. That's like saving the screen so you can come back. And that's gonna be your hotkey I prefer to set my hotkey at select. So let's just go back on this step right here when you're setting up your controller, it will ask for a hotkey button. Remember what that button is? I like to set it up as select. So what is your, your shortcuts here? Select plus start for me, select plus Y for save, select plus X to load, select plus A to reset. There's also select up and down to change your slot. There's a lot more. And to their point, you do wanna check out the manual over here because there's a lot more to learn uh, about that. One last thing is you can always go over to Recall Box and check out their documentation here, and they go into the specifics as far as how to do some of those steps. So if you did get lost, you could try this as well. Now, do know this is not as user-friendly to me as this article it is here. So what do I think? What do I think about Thorin and his article? I think any time that the Raspberry Pi gets some love and it gets new people checking it out, it's a great thing. I really think that a lot of people think they can't handle a, a Raspberry Pi, like they think it's too much work or you know they it's, it's over their head as far as their technology skills. And I would say you're going to feel that way, but you're gonna feel so great when you get it up and running and working. And a lot of these little tweaks and things and changes are actually really, really easy. Oftentimes it's a simple Google search or asking somebody on a forum. The community is great and the customization, we've only scratched the surface here. It can get cooler and cooler and cooler. So with all that said, cool to see the New York Times showcasing this. That I think it's awesome, but let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.